Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to take two questions uh, which were asked from your statistical thermodynamics and both of these questions were asked for one marks each, right? So they were asked in your gate 2019 exam and I'll try to explain you guys that how you can easily solve these questions. Both of them uh, were a numerical answer type question. So uh, you were not having any options for these questions, but yeah. Uh, it was pretty simple to solve them they were just based upon some basic aspects of your statistical thermodynamics so let's get into that one by one so i'll be taking question number 23 first and later on i'll be taking question number 22 all right so here you can see in this question it says that uh, consider a system of three identical and distinguishable non-interacting particles okay so these particles are identical these particles are distinguishable and these are non-interacting with each other and there are three available non-degenerate single particle energy levels having energies of zero epsilon and two epsilon right uh, so what they say is that uh, the system is in contact with a heat bath of temperature t kelvin the total energy of two epsilon is shared by these three particles so the number of ways in which particle can be distributed is now this is very simple question and it's one of the uh, like one of the basic questions which can be asked from this particular statistical thermodynamics topic all right so what it says that first of all you should know that how many particles you have so you have three particles and all these particles are distinguishable that means all of them are different from each other right generally what formula which which we study for statistical thermodynamics which we apply generally those formula are for indistinguishable particles in that formula we consider that all the particles are same but here in the condition given in the question it says that the particles are distinguishable means they are different from each other so let's say our three particles are a b and c okay so these are our three particles now they are non-interacting okay so they will not interact with each other and three available non-degenerate single particle energy levels are there so there are three energy levels let's draw them so you have energy level of zero you have energy level of epsilon and you have energy level of two epsilon now you have to put these particles in a such a way that the total energy comes out to be 2 epsilon that's what is given to you in the question okay so total energy of 2 epsilon is shared by these three particles so let's see that how many type of combinations are possible in this case so what i can do since i need 2 epsilon energy so i can put one of my particle in 2 epsilon energy level and rest of them i can put it in uh, zero energy level so the energies of uh, other two particle will come out to be zero Whereas the energy of one particle will be 2 epsilon. So if I add all the total energy, so 2 epsilon plus 0 plus 0 will give me 2 epsilon. So total energy remains to be 2 epsilon, right? So this is one of the arrangement. Now I can play with these, uh, like these particles because they are distinguishable, right? So I can just replace them one by one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put B over here and I'm going to put A and C over here. And what I, what I can do next is I can put my C over here and a and b over here so now these are the three arrangements which i can do in which i am getting two epsilon energy right in all these three you can just add them up and you will just get uh, two epsilon energy now uh, is there any other possibility in which i will just get three uh, or like two epsilon energy so yes there are more possibilities and for that i'll try to use a different combination in that what i will do i will put two of my particles in in my energy level epsilon okay so if i put a and b in energy level epsilon and my particle c in energy level zero so total energy will be epsilon plus epsilon plus zero so that will be two epsilon plus zero overall it will come out to be two epsilon right so that's what i am i am bound to get now i can just again play with these uh, these particles so i'll just change the position of these particles i can just do the combinations possible combination of them so it will be like A and C and I'll be having B over here and I'll be having B and C and I'll be having over A over here. Now these are the only possibilities, right? Uh, you can check it out of your own. Is there any other possibility in which overall energy comes out to be two epsilon and you can place your particles in such a way? You have three particles, right? If you, you can try off your own. Uh, you can just try to put all the three in this. So in that case, we'll be having epsilon plus epsilon plus epsilon. So that will give you three epsilon. So obviously not. There is no other possibility. So how many possibilities did I got? Or how many ways in which I have 
uh, put my particles so these are one two three four five and six ways okay each of these set actually tells us about one of the combination or one of the ways in which particle can be arranged right so there are total six ways so that's what the answer of this particular question is so see how simple this question was all right so this is the next question which was again asked for one marks from a statistical thermodynamics the question says that consider the two statements at thermal equilibrium having energy zero and two kbt where kb is your boltzmann constant uh, for which the degeneracies are one and two respectively the value of partition function at the same absolute temperature t is okay so now this is a pretty simple and straightforward question based upon the direct uh, equation right so you just need to know the equation to find out uh, the partition function uh, when your energy level is given and uh, when, when your energy is given and the degeneracy value is given right so i'll just tell you the formula first of all so this is the formula which will be used to find out the number of partition functions uh, where z denotes the partition function over here sigma is your sum of uh, the terms gi is the the degeneracy of the ith level ei is the energy of the ith level right so we'll try to put it up and try to solve it up right so for the first one uh, we will be having i'll just write down the values first of all so you have e1 is equals to 0 and we have e2 is equals to 2 kbt right so that's what it is given instead of kb uh, i have written k over here it should be kb like it's but obvious right that is showing you the boltzmann constant and the values of uh, like the degeneracy is g1 is equals to 1 and the value of g2 is equals to 2 okay so we'll just put it up over here so the formula becomes z is equals to it will be g1 e to the power minus e1 by kt or kbt plus g2 e to the power minus e2 by kbt right so you just need to put the values and you are done with it so let's solve it up we will be having g1 that is 1 into e to the power minus 0 by kbt okay and plus uh, g2 is 2 into e to the power um, minus 2 kbt by kbt all right so that means e to the power 0 is going to give me 0 sorry e to the power 0 is going to give me 1 right so 1 into 1 is going to give me 1 so i am going to get 1 from this term over here i'll be having 2 into and this kbt and kbt will be cancelled out i'll be having e to the power minus 2 now you have to use your calculator okay you you will be having calculator provided by gate so that calculator is pretty much uh, accurate enough to give you answer for this uh, you can solve it up using any of your scientific calculator if you have uh, right now maybe in, within your mobile you can just check it out in that that what is the value of e to the power minus 2 actually is so once you will solve it you will get to know that e to the power minus 2 is actually 0 0.135 so i'll just do it over here on the screen so you will be getting 1 plus 2 into the value of this e to the power minus 2 comes out to be 0 0.135333 or something like so just since we just need to round off up to two decimal places i have taken up to four but later on we'll round up round it up okay I multiply this value with two and you'll be getting zero point so one plus uh, zero point two seven zero six all right now you add this up and the final answer will come out to be 1.2706 rounding off to two decimal places your answer will come out to be 1.27 so that's what the correct answer is 1.27 will be the correct answer for this particular question so it's a very simple very straightforward question and you need to remember this particular formula to find out um, the number of partition function when the energy and the degeneracy is given to you for the particular system right so these were two questions from your statistical thermodynamics in your gate 2019 i will try to cover each and every topic from especially from the physical chemistry uh, especially for focusing on this gate 2019 uh, all the topic wise questions i'll try to provide you on this particular channel so if you are new to this channel do subscribe this channel if you like this video give it a like and i'll see you guys in the next video uh, till then have a great day Bye bye